Hey, good morning, everybody. BDL 44 coming at you another video. All right, so happy 420, all smokers out there. Definitely going to need some if you're a Laker fan because we did not have the greatest game to yesterday. <clears throat> not at all. We went into Memphis, laid a smooth egg. It's a real rotten one, too. It was not a very nice game for the Lakers. And, you know, we found ourselves in a situation where we did a little complaining about the rotation as usual. But it's more so just about wanting to see our opportunities um, expand when you have more options, when you have players that you can use that haven't been used and you see yourself getting beaten. And you know that those players' uh, strengths are strengths that you can use in terms of shot blocking and rebounding. You look at your team having these issues rebounding and shot blocking. You just understand that there are other things you could have did your coach could have tried. And granted, God's going to have cold nights, cold nights. And that's okay, you know. Anthony had a cold night. D'Lo had a cold night. We gave them the requisite amount of help for that. But at the end of the day, there's it, so many other players we could have used. There's so many different things you can do. And I get it. It's only 48 minutes. It's the playoffs and the old, you know, deal is to, to shrink your bench but I just don't think it really makes any sense to do so anymore and I've been telling people this for almost a year now that shrink your bench in playoff time uh, you know narrative or the way that people used to do things in the past it made sense for then but it absolutely doesn't make any sense now people are just doing it because they think that's what they're supposed to do it's really counterproductive for a multitude of reasons and i think people haven't stepped back to ask themselves why they are doing it anymore it's just understood to do it and so that's my problem with the nba we live in just like a lot of parallels in the world we're just doing stuff because our granddaddies did it. Not necessarily because it makes any sense for the world we're in. They were doing things because it made sense for what they were dealing with. Half the players on the team couldn't play. Half them dudes was, you know, not taking care of themselves properly. Half of them, you know, it wasn't like it is now where they all super talented. Been through AAU programs, you know, it was a need to keep players on the floor for long periods of time because if you snatch them out of the game they couldn't hit a shot you know it's like that kind of talent level just wasn't wasn't there so you had to shrink your bench so you keep scrubs off the floor but in the NBA where half the guys on the team are on the team f developing and are better than the guys in front of that are in front of them or going to be very soon or provide something that those dudes in front of them don't and we got like a mixture of, of, of a changing of eras, so to speak, where we're, we're exiting a certain era where teams were shrinking their bench and, and players would, you know, do their very best, I guess, to, to, to stay healthy throughout an 82 game season while only having eight guys in their rotation all season long. It's just not the world we're in anymore. It's not even how. Teams are structuring their rosters anymore. GMs are building teams so that you could use all 12 guys, all 16 guys. So that it would make more sense for your roster. So that it make more sense for this, you know, managing your health throughout this long schedule. And it's like your team. We've been using players like Troy Brown and and, and um, Winnie and Gabriel all season long, all the way up until game 82. And then as soon as we cross the playoff threshold, all of a sudden those players are useless. They can't help you anymore. But what happened to the logic of continuity? We don't even halfway want to change our second unit because of the fact that we use it so much, even though it's literally failed us every time we've done it. So that logic doesn't bleed over into to what it is we're talking about here in regards to expanding so that we have more options so that we can use what it is that we've been using, which would provide us continuity. It's like these things don't even come into account. It's like, yeah, I get it. If your team is trash and you've been using bad players all season long and you make it to the playoffs of course you don't want them bad players on the floor it's phoenix it's cleveland they ain't gonna play nobody but seven players that's really all they got timberwolves that's all they got they go into their bench and work those guys into rotation and those guys go take more from them than they give them in a lot of cases and it's just it's just what they are but that's not where the lakers are that's not where the kings are that's where, not where the knicks are it's a lot of teams out there that don't have that damn problem 
And those are the team, Atlanta, and those are the teams that need to identify. They need their coaches to identify that they don't have that problem. You are not supposed to shrink your bench. You're supposed to make sure you use everybody on it because the sum of your pieces make the fullness of your strength. Your team ain't that good if you shrink it to seven. You're dumbing it down just like Darvin did against the Memphis Grizzlies last night in every way possible, making everything easy for the Memphis Grizzlies to have a heroic and, 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 and beautiful night. You know, they met the challenge of the of the day because we strategize in a way that allowed the challenge not to be that difficult. And so that's really what it is for me. The idea that we're supposed to play less players in the playoffs when there's more condensed basketball and you're being strategized against is stupid as hell to me. You are limiting your options and decreasing the amount of things that the other team has to strategize against. You're giving them less to worry about. Okay, it's only seven guys, so I ain't got to worry about them other eight. That's five extra hours of sleep, dummies. What the hell are y'all doing? This is what I'm talking about. It's like people just using old man mantras as if that made any sense. Them old men were only shrinking their benches because half the team was trash. It's the only reason. So, please, let's step into the 21st century here. Shrinking your bench when you have a bunch of high level professionals and half of the ones you got are unproven or been used since the old era. And now the new ones are coming in more state of art and better. And you don't even want to use them because grandpa said he didn't use his. It's like, stop being like grandpa and real look around and realize you're holding a smartphone. He didn't have one. Like these type of things I'm trying to help people understand so that our league doesn't continue to eat away at its own self. Like literally. And then teams that are rising to the top to be super cha- champions, and they're not even excellent. They're not excellent. It's just a half of the league, if more than half of the league is in the dark age. That's what it is. So that's that's what I have to say. I just think the Lakers need to, to if they want to win this NBA championship, we got to get modern right now. Stop shrinking our bench. Stop using old philosophies about, you know, basketball philosophies that are soon to be outdated and step into the future. Simplify the game, use size, and let the stuff that you're trying to uh, capture go. Because the holes that you also leave yourself by doing so are more so plentiful than the strengths that you provide yourself when doing it this way. And so that's my thing. It's like people are so caught up in the modern era and the modern way to play basketball that they aren't even open minded to opportunities to simplify what it is that they're doing. It's like trying to get from point A to point B, but you putting all kinds of dots all over the paper that ain't even necessary. You're going to point B, C, D, E, F. All you're trying to do is get to B, man. That's it. And so that's kind of how I see it, man. It's like people have been taught the hard way to do things and they believe in the hard way to do things and they stop thinking for themselves. It's like, yes, I know they set you down for like six months to teach you the most difficult way of doing things. But like, look to the left of you. There's a lever there that says easy way to go. Just take that. You know what I'm saying? Simplification. And so that's my problem with Darvin Ham. He's listening. He's, he's remembering too much of the teachings and, and not doing enough looking at what he's seeing. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, there's a million ways to get to where you're going. But the easiest path is probably the best one for you. And so if you give us the size that we need to put next to Anthony Davis, you just play Bamba a good 20 minutes of these games in place of this bull crap you're doing with, with Malik Beasley and all this garbage you're doing with small ball. Troy Brown married, married to Troy Brown when he ain't did nothing all season long, basically. It just gets to a point where you're like, I'm way past irritated. I was irritated at the All-Star break. I was irritated when, when LeBron passed the scoring title and we let OKC walk in our house and beat the hell out of us. And everybody seemed to be fine with it. I, I, I was so angry. That was one of the most embarrassing Laker fan days in the history of my life. It's like That's down there with some of the worst moments because at the end of the day, winning was the last thing on my organization's mind. And it, it was only like two players that give a damn about that game. Anthony Davis and basically Russell Westbrook. But the only people who even cared that we lost. They didn't even cared that we were competing. And some could argue that Anthony Davis had other things on his mind that had nothing to do with winning too. Who knows? But the point is, I was pissed about losing. I was pissed about losing. And so here we are fast forwarding to this game. That I think is probably the easiest game you're going to see in the playoffs. You ain't you're pro- For the rest of the playoffs. I could argue we're not going to have a game easier than game two of the first round. When John Moran was out, half of their bigs was out. Jaron Jackson rolled his ankle halfway through the second quarter. Like, it was so much there for us to try to overcome with ease because we had the ability to do that. And 
Darvin Ham just did what he always does. The opposite of that, make life hard for himself, try to see if his team can dig his, its way out of the hole that he digs them. And we just, you know, I tell you, man, I'm not supposed to be this unhappy when I'm this far along in my season. The playoffs have begun. My team is good. Why am I pissed off? Why am I looking around at all the Laker fans? We've only lost one game in the playoffs. We've only played two games in the playoffs. Why do we feel so dejected? And it's because we've watched this for so long. Two years of small ball. One year of Darvin's rotations. You know, and it's like, and this is repeat. I'm saying the same thing over. But if it worked, you wouldn't have anybody complaining. That's what Darvin got to remember. If this stuff translated to us having big leads and a lot of rest for our players at the end of these games it would serve itself better because that's what you got to deal with in regards to your roster if what you're doing is going to cost us to play more basketball if what you're doing is more less likely to succeed like simply less likely to succeed then you're more likely to play more basketball like that is about as easy of a thing to understand as possible. I think I could tell that to a three-year-old and I think they would somewhat get what I was trying to say there. I think they would. That's what bothers me and this is what leads me to think that people are doing things on purpose, man. This is why I think there is a reason to question the integrity of what you're looking at, which is also something I've been saying for over a year. It's like it gets to a point where you look at professionals who are making millions of dollars and say, The analytics are telling you that this is less likely to succeed and you choose it anyway. And I'm supposed to ignore that as if this is something we're just moonwalking into accidentally, accidentally, shamelessly, because the coach is incompetent. Like, I have a hard time believing that, even though I know incompetence can can run all the way up to the the top of the of the country if, if you let it. But it just seems to me that people would be a bit more deliberate. When they have entire teams responsible for billions of dollars. And I don't mean teams as in the basketball teams. I'm talking about the the, the brass, the organization. You got multiple minds coming together to make decisions, especially with the Lakers in the roundtable. So you got multiple minds looking at multiple or the same data. And they all come to the conclusion that we should land on something that is less likely to succeed in multiple areas on the court. Like, I, I just need people to help my brain you know settle into that because i'm not the type of person that's just able to just look at that and not see that angle you know it just that that's not how this particular brain works so if you're going to tell me you're doing something that doesn't work you're going to have to basically convince me that you're stupid and i haven't received that confirmation as of yet i see stupid actions but i don't understand multiple humans agreeing to do something that doesn't look as if it is going to work that's the bottom line man i don't get that somebody going to help me with that for real man you got lebron james anthony davis these are the top guys in the whole damn league and you're trying to tell me that they think it's a good idea to be smaller than the other guys on christmas day going up against luca the don Nobody's complaining about how we're too small to guard this guy. We don't have anybody in front of him that can defend him. Nobody's concerned about this. But we all come together as a collective to agree to do something that's going to move millions and millions of dollars. I just, I'm not, I'm not, nah, nah, that's not coming together for me. man. That's not coming together. Now, if we were two bit criminals or a bunch of people didn't have no education or just a bunch of misguided people, casuals stepping in here with a bunch of money ready to throw it at something and didn't know what we were doing. That's different, but that's not what I see there. That's not what I see there. So this is why I tell the NBA, and I say this on my channel so often, that they're going to have to, they're going to have to address this. Not the Lakers. The the entire league is going to have to address why we're seeing choices made that deliberately lead teams to failure purposefully. And, and, And have it basically presented to us as mistakes or accidents. Or people just not being smart enough to do the right thing. How many people are not smart enough to do the right thing? 30, 40, how many people are in these organizations? 50 people. All of them look at the same data and say, nah, let's go with the thing that's less likely to work. You know, the percentage is telling us this, don't put this player in this position. No, we're going to put him there anyway. It didn't work yesterday. We're going to do it again. And all 50 of y'all said that's cool. 
And you want me to believe that that's just accident. Like, God, oh, it's just a coach fault. He just, you know. And you see that fail for two years straight. Do two different coaches. But I'm supposed to look at this and say, you know what? Nah, he's just a stupid coach. Nobody else is saying, yeah, let's do this thing that doesn't work together. Like, I'm just not that. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm just wired different. You know, you can't run that past me. I see the I see the cap. I see it. And so that's what it really becomes a situation for me. It's like, all right, how much, how much do I pay into what it is I'm seeing? Maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe, the, you know, maybe it's not like that. Maybe people really are stupid. Maybe they genuinely believe something's not going to work and then proceed to not see it work. And then just like think, well, next time it will. And it doesn't, you know, that's like the definition of insanity. But hell, mental illness is real. Maybe people are crazy. But how many, how many, 50 of them crazy? 45 people create like I'm, I'm you see what I'm saying it's like you can't sell this stuff to Laker fans bro you can't we've won too much we've won too much you know what I'm saying we have a healthy respect for succeeding in our goals and we have a healthy fear for losing and failing and so that fear is going to lead us as I always like to say into having instincts that are going to help us win we just kind of know what's going to lead to us succeeding in certain situations we may not necessarily know the game but we know damn well what leaves us vulnerable. I may not be a basketball mind, but I know damn sure what's heartbroken my heart over the last 30 years and what little things I saw that led to that. What big things I saw led to that. I saw other teams get their heart broken by teams I be, you know, was able to see my team beat. And I saw what traits and mistakes they made. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, there's a lot of data in my head, man, as it pertains to this league. A lot of memories of what worked a lot of trial and error as it pertains to my own little basketball world. If you don't box out, you can rebound over. If you don't make the extra pass, it's going to go wrong for you. You just lose so much. You know, what costs you losses. It's 38 years of enjoying this sport my whole life. Basically. I don't find myself confused about what it's going to take to keep my, my, my teammates healthy, my team healthy, rather. I'm not confused. You got to play more people more of the time. You got this long ass schedule. I'm not confused about what's going to help me get rebounds. You got to play the bigger players to assure you got the rebounds. I'm not confused about the fact that that leaves me vulnerable to certain things because nobody's perfect and something's going to leave you some type of vulnerable on a basketball court. You know what I mean? Something. But if the stuff I choose to do this is going to leave me with a, a freaking freeway size hole in my defense only to give me a 20% chance of being successful. If I choose to be somebody that wants to be seen as successful, would I not choose something that's only going to give me a 20% chance of succeeding? And 20% is just something I pulled out of my backside. It don't have to necessarily be 20%, but the point is, it is much more likely to fail if we run small ball. It's much more likely to fail on the boards if we don't put bigs down there. Much more likely to, whatever the technical stuff is, you feel me? Forget what they actually are. Just zoom out. Do stuff that works. Just do stuff that look like it's going to work. And it will likely work. And the fact that I have to speak like this. In regards to my basketball team. Just is, is the problem man. That's the problem. Now if I had a bad roster. I'm cool. I can do it. I can deal with that. Because the roster can't play. And so whatever the coach is doing. It's going to make it. Just look more like. It's like Luke Walton when we had the kids. Yeah, he was doing a bunch of bad stuff, but the kids couldn't win anyway, so it didn't matter. But when the stakes is on the line, we can't afford Luke Walton rotations. We can't afford Frank Vogel rotations, and we certainly can't afford Darvin Ham rotations. You see how this works? Every every hire, same problem. You know what I'm saying? It's like I, I don't even care anymore of why I'm seeing what I'm seeing. I just want the people who are choosing this to stop choosing it. You know what I'm saying? I, for the longest time, have said, get people out of here. That's my solution. That's how I fix my problems. I remove those problems. But sometimes that's not the answer. Sometimes giving up on people ain't the answer, whatever. Sometimes not letting people work their progressions ain't the answer or is the answer. And letting them grow and letting them get their self together over time is the way to move. I get that. I, I believe in Mike Brown as a coach now. When he was a coach of the Lakers, I couldn't stand him. I wanted him fired just as bad as I want. Darvin fired and I'm pretty sure Darvin 10 years from now will be coach of the year for some team. <laughs> you know 
You know, you work his progressions. But my thing is, just like any young player, I got to sit through their progression. I don't want to sit through these progressions with this coach when I have a win now organization, franchise, roster, timeline. You get what I'm trying to say. I got Braun on my team. I ain't got time for Darvin's stuff. I ain't got time for it. Even if I, I, I really, really, really think Darvin is a special coach, I really don't have time for him to be anything less than special today. You know what I'm saying? I don't have time for him to be making his mistakes because I really need to win my championship before LeBron retires or else my timeline doesn't even make any sense for the moves that I've already made. Anthony Davis is in the balance, even though he's not helping himself by not playing as well on the offensive end, knowing dang well his team needs at least another 10 points of scoring to win this damn game. More than that, but at least 10 to tie it up. So that's my thing. It's like Anthony Davis is upset at a lot of stuff that he's seeing. I, I was referring to an exchange in the video, and I didn't clarify but it was an exchange between him and Darvin Ham where Darvin Ham was trying to slap his hands. And he slapped Darvin Ham's hands as he was getting checked out of the game. Darvin hit him on the chest and he kind of like did like, what do you want from me? Kind of hand signals like what? What else? Like, And my thing was, I'd seen that from Anthony Davis. That exchange is what I was referring to in that video. I saw that and I think all of us saw that. And it's not that I think that Darvin Ham has lost the, the locker room. I just don't think that Anthony's happy with how he's being used. Taking him off the floor in a situation like that, you're putting Malik Beasley back in the game? I mean, what are you doing is what I want to ask. I don't know what Anthony's thinking in that situation, but that's what I'm thinking. Like, do you think that's actually going to be a more likely substitution that will succeed in that situation? I mean, clearly not. We've seen Malik Beasley create so many different problems for our team just by being down there, as we always say, just by being small. Putting him next to, to Dennis Schroeder. You know, and that's another reason why Dennis Schroeder's game was so awful. The lineups he was in, the rotations that he put Dennis in were all horrible. He didn't put Dennis in a single good situation yesterday. You know what I mean? And these are things I want our Laker fans to, to be really, really thinking about when we look at the outcome of these games. Because I don't be screaming at coaches just because I have a problem with coaches. I scream at coaches because they're the ones in control of what we see down there. They're the ones who put the players on the floor to do what it is that they do. And players are not going to do well if they don't have complimentary things on the floor to help them. And if that coach doesn't identify what those things are, he won't provide them. Your player's going to look bad and the player's going to be the one that gets blamed. And because I've been learning this over the years, I'm no longer as confused to look at the players and say, OK, you didn't do enough. And the coach had nothing to do with that. I just know better now. It's been a long time since I thought that. Long time. Probably since I was about 14 years old that I stopped just solely blaming players. Because NBA is a chess game. Basketball is a chess game. You could have athletes that could do all kinds of stuff. The video game taught me this the best. You can have athletes that could do all kinds of stuff. You could have a bunch of souped up super shooters, super dunkers, whatever. But if you don't use your timeouts correctly, you don't rotate them correctly, you let the, a, a cold hand stay out there too long, you, you take all the bigs off the floor against big players, you put all bigs on the floor against small players, all these different things that are going to allow you at a disadvantage, you're going to get your butt whipped. It doesn't matter who those players really are. If you're in this professional ranks, you had better control the team correctly. Or you're going to be the reason they lose, no matter how well people are shooting and rebounding and all that. So as I've come to understand that and respect the game from a chess perspective, so to speak, of the chess game type of thing, as opposed to it being something that's actually running around a lot, it's chess to me. It's, it's, it's like a board game, no different than a card game, anything else with strategy. So if those strategies aren't implemented properly, then you're going to have a problem with BDR 44. Salute to Kobe Minute. And that's what I wanted people to understand when you hear me talk and I'm ranting. And I'm getting on the kill, which is these are the thoughts that I'm going through. This is what it is that I'm feeling when I'm talking. It's not just some, you know, mindless, you know, let's attach myself to the coach for some clout. I don't have that type of thought processing at all. I'm thinking more so about who's causing the ineptitude on the basketball floor. That's it. And nine out of ten times I identify this season and last season and the season before that as the coaches.
and that could be very well the people above the coaches that we already stated. But at the end of the day, it's the coaches who we can see calling the plays, who we can see controlling the timeouts, who we can see rotations. So it's like, all right, man. I'm supposed to look at this. And see, this is the thing that also bothers me. Darwin has a, a, a very interesting position. I don't know how it, the truth is set up, but it looks like he will potentially have a pass to fizzle out of these playoffs and fail because he's a rookie and because a lot of people aren't going to really look at the fullness of the fact that this roster uh, was put together in the second half of the season. They're not going to look at that. They're going to they're gonna give him a pass for that, more or less, is what I think would be the case. They'll be like, oh, well, they're the team. They're good, but they weren't that good because look at their record. But, you know, they had a, such a good team, so let's give them another chance. It's like they're not going to identify at all that the roster was bad at the first half of the season, but he could have did plenty to make us much better. There was plenty of things he could have done to make that roster look much better. He didn't do none of those things. He made us look as bad as we possibly could look with that bad roster. That's that's what I identify. Just like last year with Frank Vogel, we could have did things to make ourselves a better basketball club than we were. We could have had 10, 11 more wins last year, but we chose certain things. And as a result, we looked as bad as we did. This is what it is. This is exactly what it is. You know what I'm saying? I, in my mind's eye, think that Mo Bamba and Lonnie Walker could be starters in this league. Now, I'm not sure how good the team would be. What you need to surround them with to make sure that they're a champion. It would take a whole lot for them to be the best players on the team for you to be a champion. That just, I don't see that. But what I'm saying is if you want some starters production, you don't have to go away from those guys. This is coming from somebody who knows this well enough. You don't have to go away from Lonnie Walker to get starters production. You don't have to go away from Obama to get starters production. Those guys, if you give them 40 minutes, will put up star level numbers. Obama will get a double double with three blocks if you give him 38 minutes. He's going to do this. Lonnie Walker is going to get you 28, 30 points if you give him 38 minutes. He's going to do this. I'm not confused by this. I'm not letting others tell me otherwise. I've seen it with my own eyes more than once. So that's why my patience level doesn't exist as it pertains to burying those two particular pairs on the back of the bench. I don't have any patience for that. And I also believe I think, I believe I know what Max Christie can do as well. I believe Max Christie's level goes much higher than we've seen. And I think I already know that. I can already see Max Christie's 25 point, 11 rebounds, three steals, four assists game. I can already see that. Because he already rebounds the ball very well. His shooting stroke is really, really nice. And everything else is just going to be him playing off of guys who can hit shots. I don't have a problem playing Max Christie. None. I have a problem playing Leek Beasley. I have a problem playing Troy Brown. These are people I have a problem playing right. Vanderbilt right now. These guys are unplayable right now. Even though Vanderbilt did some good things in the fourth quarter, he, he's damn near unplayable when we use him the way we use him. When we use him, when Darvin uses him, Vanderbilt is, 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 is utterly useless. Now, when Utah uses him, fantastic. When Minnesota uses him, pff, one of the best defensive players you can find. On our team, I mean, it's Darvin, yo. That's just what I'm trying to say. He picked up tip, Double T. There's a lot of people been waiting to see Double T put on Laker uniform for a long time. That man, I, we still ain't seen him in a Laker uniform. We don't know what he looks like in the uniform, yo. Shit is ridiculous. And I'm sorry for cursing, but this is where we're at. We're in the playoffs. And I got players on my team, I don't even know what they look like when they wear the uniform. Devon Reed, I'll never know what Devon Reed could do. He came and went just as quick. Shaq Harrison, who knows what he can do? Who knows? Scotty Pippen, only in my mind's eye do I see what he can do. This is the crap that I have no patience for. And then I watched Russell Westbrook play 82 games damn near last year, 81 games. And probably 40 this year. Lost more than half of them. I watched Patrick Beverly play a whole half a season with no upside. None. Zero upside, fam. Couldn't couldn't barely run a decent play with him on the floor because we were so damn small out there. This man benched Lonnie Walker because he didn't 
play f- the four spot well enough in his small ball lineups, and we ain't seen him since. That's what happened there. Lonnie probably cussed him out or something for that nonsense, and he buried Lonnie in the back of the bench. That's probably what happened. I ain't heard nothing like that, but that's how it would have went if I was him. If I was Lonnie, that's exactly how it would have went. He'd have buried me for a reason. I'd have been screaming and hollering, get this man up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Thomas Bryant had to get up out of here, as we talked about yesterday, because of this stupid crap. I mean, how do you watch Thomas Bryant play as well as he did and not play him? The man scored like 30 points and didn't miss a shot. And in coach's mind, well, he can't do other things, so we shan't, we shall not play him. But he don't see that with the other players that he do use that can't do nothing. And they just give you zero production, bury you into a deep hole that Le- LeBron Nady got to try to pull us out of. Every night, HBK got to pull us out of this stupid hole. You know what I'm saying? And it's like we losing to, to the teams that we ain't got no business losing to. John Moran hurt, t- sitting up here in street clothes, holding his daughter, screaming to a parade in this damn city because we allowed him to win when he wasn't even on the floor. He up here tipping a hat. It's like, man, I don't have any respect for choosing to do things that don't work while acting like you're trying to compete against people who really don't have any respect for the game. If you're going to do anything at all, silence them. Don't have us know damn well that those guys need to be humbled and then come in here half playing. So they can continue to feel dignified and vindicated in disrespecting the game. That's another problem I have with LeBron James and this Laker team. You're supposed to be silencing those little kids. They need to be shut up. It's 29 other teams, 28 other teams that agree with us. Somebody needs to shut them up. And we the ones in the position to do so. They crippled down and out. And what do we do? What do we do? Let Darwin and his mediocrity slide into the situation and exalve them from all accountability as usual. Keep them from learning the hard lessons and all that. Because we got a bad coach who don't see any fruit in helping his damn self. So we lose games, man. We lose games and we got no business losing. And we're going to lose a series because of that. He's going to dig us a couple holes in a couple of these games. We ain't going to be able to pull ourselves out of. We're going to look up and the better team's going to beat us because of him. And at that moment, I'm going to be screaming, fire him. Shit. Shit. That's it. I don't care about this year two of this. No, because I know this roster can do it. I know the roster can do it. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't an issue about, well, Darvin brought so much to the team. Look how good the team did. No, nah, no, nah, he didn't do none of that. He didn't do none of that. They won in spite of him 98% of the time. 98% of our games, they were winning in spite of him. Not that, he didn't help the team on any of them damn games, to be honest with you. Any, any of them? Like, in any of them games, we say, yo, Darvin did a great job and we won because of Darvin. I, I think I may have said that once. Maybe twice. I'll give him twice. And that's my thing. And it's like, okay, well, maybe maybe it's just because he's a rookie. You know, we got to lower the bar. But then it's like, nah, because Nick Nurse won a championship as a rookie. You know, the, the, what's his face? Missoula's doing great over there in Boston right now. That's a rookie. Um, of course, the guy who he, he, he replaced, you know, he, he was a rookie, got to the finals. You know, so it's like I, the bar has been set a bit higher for rookies. Ain't no patience for, for Darvin Hams and Steve Nash's. Ain't no patience for that. You guys get one, one year for me. I see you suck. You out. That's how I feel, man. Got no time for it, especially when I got a win now time like the, like those two teams did. Brooklyn let their situation go by the wayside. Took too long to hire Jock Vaughn. Look how they doing with Jock, though. But they lost their stars because they took too long to hire him. That's all I got to say, Darvin. You ain't got no rope, man. I've watched too much bad coaching for three, four, five years. I ain't got no time for it no more. I'm patient and gone. I don't care about any of this. You know, and it's getting to a point where it's like, I like where LeBron's at. I like how he's approaching these playoffs. He just lost a playoff game. He had no business losing. N- no business losing. When Bron plays like that, as many times I've seen Bron turn the ball over, jack up threes I didn't like even though he was one for eight. Do all kinds of stuff I didn't play no defense. That ain't been the problem in this Memphis series. Through two games, Bron has been the, arguably the best player we got. Through two games. I thought he was fantastic in game two. And it was a lost game because of other stuff because of Darwin stuff 
D'Lo being played like he's Michael damn Jordan when he's cold as ice. And it's like that's a mistake there in and of itself, leaving him out there too long when he's struggling. Right. But these mistakes. They're acceptable. Right. It's fine that he makes his mistakes, but we don't apply that to win. It ain't OK for Lonnie to make mistakes. It, it ain't OK for Mo to make his mistakes. It's OK for, for, for Malik Beasley to leave holes open all through your defense. But Mo Bamba's mistakes, whatever his would not be able to leave out there for us would be just the biggest problem in the world though right this is why i think people are doing things on purpose because you can't you can't make that make no sense it's like so 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 mo bamba's potential turnovers or brick shots are just the worst thing in the world even though they cover up more holes than anything that we would otherwise try with malik beasley putting ad and, and, and bamba look fantastic on paper together you're going to out rebound everybody and provide rim protection for the entire team only thing you probably give up is a couple open threes that probably won't get hit anyway. But that's the worst holes to leave open as opposed to all the rebounding holes, all the weak side help rolls holes, all of the of the scoring holes because we're getting pushed away from the basket with shooters. All of these different things that leave you vulnerable. They don't they don't hold much precedent. But whatever potential wrong Bamba does, whatever potential wrong Lonnie does, is something that's going to tank us in Darvin's mind. As opposed to the tanking that he's doing with the stuff he's trying, which is acceptable. I'm, try, I'm trying to understand this. I'm speaking in circles because it doesn't make any sense. The only thing that makes sense is people deliberately trying to lose and are lying to the public about that. Like in Dallas. Since that's a theme around the league. So, yeah, I'm a pissed off Laker fan. I get it. I've only lost one game in the playoffs. It's 2-2. Why am I overreacting? I'm not. Because I'm not reacting to one game. I'm reacting to tendencies that span over four years. And we're in the playoffs now, so it matters more. You see what I'm saying? This is why I'm so upset. Because I've been watching this play itself out. It's like the rest of us. So when you talk about it for 30, 40 minutes a day. And you turn around and see this coach leaning and doing the same stuff again for the 84th time. It just gets to a point where it's like, bro, fire him. Like, seriously, get him gone. Get the people who hired him gone. And then bring in some people who believe in things that help us win, that believe in things. And, and as I've always said, have instincts that lean us into success. People who are afraid to do the stuff that Darwin's doing because they know it ain't going to lead them to nothing good. You know what I'm saying? That's what I need. Not people who have ideas that leaning into the stuff that has the least chance to win is the stuff to do. God, I'm sick of saying that, yo. I, Genie Bus, I am so tired of saying those words. So I can only imagine the people who follow me are sick of hearing them. I don't blame y'all, but I'm never going to give y'all what I don't have. I'm never going to give y'all some bull crap that's manufactured just to make people feel better or whatever. I don't care nothing about that. I want to win. And I've said it a million times. I genuinely want to win. I want my team to win. I want my fan base to win. I want my haters to be unhappy all the time, every year. I want people like Memphis to feel like they ain't never got a chance every time they see purple and gold. They're going to have to do all that stuff they do against somebody else because when they see us, it's futile. And we got the roster to humble them. But we got the coach to make all that go away. BDL 44, I thank you all for watching.